This week I started designing my dream content planning app. So many little features that I want in my current writing apps. I'm thinking through titles, thumbnails, hooks, shot lists, stories, all the way down to trying to take one idea and post it on every platform. I haven't really found an app out there that keeps me organized with my content and my goals. This past year, I built a habit of playing with all the latest like AI models and code gen tools. And I finally feel like building a personal app is kind of within my reach. So I've decided to start that process and share everything I learned here on this channel with you. By the way, if you don't know, my name is Ricky. I'm an engineering designer and I've spent the last five years helping brands ship consumer service websites and I've always kind of wanted to build an app of my own. <laughs> my first major decision for the app was whether I wanted this to be a web app, a mobile app, or a native app. If you don't know what a native app is, I really just mean an app that is built specifically for the Mac or the Windows computers. When it comes to writing, my best ideas always seem to come to me while I'm like taking a walk or doing a completely random task. I should be doing anything and my brain will present me with this like visual or an answer to a question that I've been trying to solve all day. And once it shows up, I have a very limited amount of time to write it down in complete detail or I'm gonna lose it completely forever. So for that reason, I really value having the ability to write down the idea quickly on my phone and have it sync to my computer so that when I am ready to sit down and build on that idea later, it's good to go. But yeah, this device syncing feature that I'm talking about can technically happen on all three platforms, but I do have a couple of other requirements for the app too. I want the app to run as fast as possible on my phone, and I think web apps can kind of struggle with that. And I would also really like the ability to use my own private, local AI models on the device. To be honest, I don't know how long it would take for new language models to like, be useful on a phone. I think right now it's a little bit early, but I'm making the assumption that over time, smaller models are going to show up and they're gonna be performant on edge devices. There would be a lot of great perks that would come with that. All of my notes could stay on my device and not get sent to big AI. <laughs> the inference is free because it all happens on device and I'd have a model available to me 24 seven with or without an internet connection that can help me write content. But ultimately to get the best performance out of a local AI model, you would have to integrate it to the hardware of the phone. And the only option for me to do that is to build an iOS app. Yeah, I also think it's inevitable that I build a native Mac application too, because you know all of my ideas are just gonna be sitting on my phone and I wanna be able to flush them out in their entirety if I do happen to be in front of the computer or have it on me. It's just obviously a, better, a faster, a better way to work. But for now, I'm gonna start with the iOS app and go from there. So I normally design websites. So the first thing that I had to figure out this week was my setup for designing mobile apps in Figma. There turned out to be five things that I needed. The first thing I realized is that Apple puts out a free UI kit for their latest iOS and iPad. There's a lot of iPhone specific UI that you really don't wanna be designing from scratch. So it's actually a really good use of time to just go and grab that kit. The second thing is that Apple has their own open source library for icons. So you don't have to buy or build, you know draw your own icons. If you wanna design with those icons in Figma, you can use a Figma plugin called SF Symbol Browser. You basically just search through the whole library and copy and paste each icon onto the design. The third thing is that Apple uses their font SF Pro in their UI kit. So in order to design with it on your computer, you're going to have to like have that installed. <laughs> I personally found that like designing websites and apps is much easier if you're working with an existing or at least some kind of established type scale. And Apple has their type scale already built into the kit. You have all of your options for text already picked out ahead of time. So you can just focus on designing. And so the fourth thing, and I'm just adding this as a little bit of a tip because I had trouble with it, to actually install Saw the font, I had to grab it from their website, but the font is in DMG format. So if you're like me and you're designing on a Windows computer, you probably remember this from like early internet, but there's an app called 7-Zip, which is open source and it's free, and it lets you extract files from basically any type of zip file. So you can use that to extract all the font files out of there. There's a few packages that you have to open up, but you know, it's a free way to do it. And if it doesn't work at that point, like it didn't for me, you can always drag the font file directly into the Windows font control panel and that seemed to work. Last but not least, I wanted to design the phone on a device that I personally own. Right now, I've got the iPhone 15 Pro, and this is basically taking care of you with Figma. They have frames for every single device size, so I just went with that, it was good to go. So when it comes to designing a new project, I always like to figure out my navigation first. In an iOS app, the high level navigation is essentially the tab bar component. So to figure out how many tabs I wanted and what I was gonna name them, I had to think through what the main problems that I was trying to solve with the app were. I boiled it down to these three things. I need a simple place to house all of my current goals 
and tie them back to any of the videos that I actually go and create. Second, I want one place to plan out all of my content across each of the platforms. And you know, when I say plan, I'm really just talking about like getting the plan down, writing it out. It doesn't need to be a place where I'm actually filming or doing any of that, but I do want to have one solid place where I can see every piece of content that I'm pulling from one video. Three, I'd like a place to store any intentional decisions that I've made around, you know, my channel or content creation in general. Things like, you know, topics I want to talk about or audiences, bios, any personal style choices. Pretty much anything that would provide me with direction when I sit down in the morning to make content. So based on that, I'm keeping it to three tabs. I've got journal, create, and profile. I like the idea of three for now, just to keep the scope as small as I can and still solve my problems, but it gives me room to grow later, which is nice. So with that in mind, I was able to start designing out a basic UI and layout for the goals tab. I knew at a minimum I needed a trigger to create a goal, a list view to display all the goals, and some sort of categorization. So I ended up going with the title and the navigation, a simple segmented control for the filtering of the goals, and a floating button for the trigger down at the bottom right for my thumb to click. I also added a simple search to the navigation just in case I ever need to search through the different goals in my database. Next, I wanted to get a quick visual indication of how many posts and which platforms are posted on in relation to a specific goal, just to give me an idea of like, what have people seen and where have they seen it? So I added a couple rows to the list view component for this just to keep it simple. I'm gonna be doing a lot of planning in this app, so I figured it might be a good idea to have some kind of a simple content calendar so that I can see my activity at a glance. I typically think about content like one week at a time, and that's about as long as it takes me to put out a YouTube video at the moment. So I felt it was really only necessary to show one week in the calendar view. Getting into some of the details, I wanted some sort of visual indication of how many posts that I have posted on each day of the week. So I started playing around between displaying a number for the total posts or using some sort of a dot system. I ended up going with the dot system because I think it's more important for me to see which platforms I've posted on in a given day than it is to see the total number of posts. And having dots allowed me to assign each a color based on their platform. I also did a quick check on my phone and I really only have about eight to 10 platforms that I could see myself posting on realistically. So I designed a three by three grid to group the dots kind of nicely for each day. By the way, a great time saver for trying out different color palettes in Figma is to use an LLM like Grok or OpenAI or which, whichever one you want to generate SVGs that you can just copy and paste really quickly. I asked Grok to go find the brand colors for each of the platforms and order them from long form to short form and then give me a bunch of options to just go and try out. And you know, the further I made it into the design, the more I started to think about this tab as like a content dashboard. It started to give me some ideas around what data I could display. Every post I write in the app is probably gonna have a scheduled posting day assigned to it. And I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, I'm not gonna be posting directly through the app because a lot of the planning I'm doing is like directly for videos, but I will have some data that I can display, like how many posts I've had in the last week or in the last month, what's my current streak? So there's a lot of things that I can kind of just start to show. So I built out these little cards right underneath the calendar view and I'm imagining to kind of just build out a library of components like this. The more content that I make, the more ideas that are probably gonna come to me of like what I'd like to see on a weekly basis. So I'm gonna keep refining this as I build out my process and get more momentum. And with that, that brings me to the final version of the design for the week. And I think it looks clean. I'm pretty happy with it. So yeah, thank you for watching. I would love for you to let me know what you think of the app or this series in the comments. You know, let me know what you wanna see. I'm gonna continue sharing process as I make it. So thanks again and I'll see you next time.